Hi, I'm Andrea Lister, editor of British Columbia History Magazine, and I'm joined by Jennifer Ashton, who's the winner of an honorable mention for the Anne and Philip Yandel Best Article Award for 2019. The article was selected from 21 articles published in the magazine last year by a panel of nine judges from around the province. And for the record, as editor, I am not one of the judges. <laughs> Uh, the annual award recognizes articles that best enhance the knowledge of the history of British Columbia and provide an enjoyable read. Jennifer's article appeared in the 2019 issue, the winter one of British Columbia History Magazine. So first, it's great to see you, Jennifer, and congratulations. Thanks very much. It was a really big surprise. <laughs> Good. So tell us about your article and your three-year quest to find the birth name of your third great-grandmother. Yeah, well, it was a really interesting journey. And um, I guess, you know, like, like all kind of journeys, sometimes you hit dead ends. And um, the journey started um, decades ago with my uncle Wayne Ashton. And he, um, he had a few notes. And at that time, we I don't think we even had her name, Celestine, as we know her. Um, so after some digging and um, I'm trying to think back of the, the very first clue I got. I can't remember. It might have been Jean Barman's book on the Stanley Park Secret. Um, so I contacted Jean and she, she gave me just tons of research she had on my family. And I was like, I was just, that was like Christmas. And Roderick too, because he'd done so much research on the Chilean side. So they just sent me pages and pages and um, I, I'm so grateful for everything she gave me. Um, it was a real a strong uh, start for me and uh, pointed me in the right direction. Um, after that, I just started digging through archives and museums and anything I could find. I started a face group, um, a face, Facebook group with my family and we just invited all the family um, that some of us had never spoken to. Um, I think right now we're a group of 37 people in there um, so we could share stories about the family um, because it was quite divided. Um, some of the family moved down to the States while some of us stayed up here in North Vancouver. Um, and I think, you know, once little bits and pieces and we found out kind of who had photo albums and who had um, names and bits of family trees and we just kind of um, put it all together and that was kind of the real start of it um, all of the stuff um, the photos and trying to find her name and everything um, came later and uh, yeah it's been really interesting and fulfilling we kind of found out how we belong and it's it's a really great feeling we have very deep roots in uh, British Columbia. Very deep roots, yeah, yeah. So where was she born? She was born in what's now called Stanley Park in the village called Woi Woi, and I hope I'm saying that right. I'm not very good at the pronunciation yet. Um, and uh, she was born there, her parents and her two older sisters were born up in Squamish, but she was born in the park. And then uh, she got together with Alexander Merrifield. Yes. We don't know very much about him and I'm, I'm assuming like, like all of the other um, colonists that came, it was, I don't know much about it. I, I can only imagine. Your research finally led you to um, an article and a painting by Mildred Valley Thornton. Yeah, this was, uh, like I said in the article, um, I had just found out about newspapers.com, which of course is the big archive of newspapers from around the world. And usually, um, you know, there's more and more um, information being put into archives everywhere, the more that time goes by and the more that um, you more funding for copying and everything. Um, so about once a month, I would check and, you know, scroll through my family names, Alexander Merrifield, all the Ashtons, anybody that I could think of that was connected to our family. 
And although I had checked Alexander's name multiple times, um, when I finally got into newspapers.com, this was one of the first things that I checked. And um, sure enough, his name popped up and I couldn't believe it. And um, I'm just trying to remember. Exactly. Well, I think I, I, when I saw the name first, um, which is Siam a lot, um, I thought, was that her? And then I recognized the picture because, of course, part of the story of this is that I actually had a postcard of that, um, which was made up um, probably, I think, in the 40s, um, 1942, Christmas of 42, I think, maybe. Um, Christmas of 42, or yeah, I think so, uh, that Mildred Valley had made up um, postcards of the painting. So anyways, I had had that and I'd recently given it away um, to a friend in Australia who was really interested in, um, in the indigenous culture of BC. So I had sent that to her with a little packet, not knowing what- Not knowing she what. was your family. Yeah, not knowing that she was mine. Um, yeah, so that was, and I couldn't get it back because of a long story. The person had passed away down in Australia. So um, anyways, so yeah, um, once I started looking again, and then I came across uh, Cheryl Saloum's book, um, where she had um, about Mildred Valley Thornton, the painter, and um, found more information on her and again her name and different spellings of her name um anyways which led me on to further um further uh discoveries about the family and yeah it's just been amazing just um people coming forward and saying oh i recognize you as my family and um just all of the cousins we must have over here and yeah it's been it's been amazing and your article really highlights the challenges of researching um, Indigenous people as well as women, you know, I mean, yeah. the one record that we looked at to, when I was editing your article is, you know, she's Mrs. Chief Harry, you know, it's not right. very, uh, not very informative in terms of her as an individual. Yeah, and that was the thing, like I said, when my uncle Wayne, you know, sent us initially had drawn out by hand, um, kind of a partial family tree. Um, she didn't have a name just beside it was uh, unknown name or something. Um, and just to even be able to find her name that was lost to us um, for so long. Um, I'm just trying to think we knew her as Mary Celestine first and then once I um, contacted the uh, Squamish band office and Faye Yelton there she gave us pages of our family history right back to 1825. Wow. Which was just a miracle uh, that it was in writing. Um, but yeah, you know, searching the archives, there was nothing. And at that time, the indigenous, um, that the federal archives were closed to us as well. Um, and I had received a grant from the friends of the British Columbia archives to get into the archives at the Royal Museum. Uh, and still nothing, 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 nothing. We couldn't find anything. We couldn't find anything about Alexander. Um, and I think it was you actually that told me the records of people crossing over from the States at that time, there was just nothing. So yeah, it was really difficult. And it's just felt like um, such a fluke to, you know, find these little markers and things that kind of spur you on. Um, but I love it. I've I got the research bug. Um, and you did your own painting. Is that based on uh, Mildred's painting or is it, was it before you found the painting? This was actually quite a time before um, when we found a family member who had an old torn photograph of her. Um, and it was of course in black and white and it was an old copy, I think of something else. I'm not sure where it had come from. Um, so yeah, I thought I would colorize it. And um, I don't know, I just wanted to see her in color. Mm, so I thought much. this would be a good way to do it, <laughs> make it myself. It's interesting how how similar it is to um, to Mildred's painting, which you found later. So that's 
Yeah. yeah, well, she has a very distinct look on her face, you know, um, and so I think that kind of made it easier to paint. And um, I made her dress, you can't really tell in this, in this painting, but it's actually quite um, three dimensional because it's, um, it's a collage as well. So um, yeah, and I'm happy that we have her with us now, have her with us now all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's all tying into a book that you're writing as well. Yes. Yeah, I'm writing a book right now um, because my family is so closely tied to the history of the beginning of Vancouver because, of course, they were here before Vancouver was um, a city. Um, and uh, I've just also received a Canada Council grant to make an accompanying website um to go along with some of the information that i found in the book because some of it is in video form i found some old film footage from 1928 um which will live wow. on the website um which is um Siamalot's sister uh harriet uh it's um film footage of her weaving oh very interesting so um so I'm excited to get that going and I'm, I'm really hoping to be able to have, you know, a lot of photos and everything um, so we can have a kind of a, um, a gallery online that will accompany the book as well with um, multimedia. And maybe we'll find more family through putting it out there as well. So that's... I hope so. You know, I, I actually have had um, contact with somebody back east um, whose father had collected a, um, years and years ago, collected a painting of um, August Jack Quetzalino, who would be my great, great uncle. Um, and he had found me through, yeah, just an article that was online about me researching. So really interesting, the people that are coming forward. And yeah, it's great. Again, thanks for chatting with us today and congratulations on uh, your award and uh, mm -hmm. it's lovely to virtually meet you after exchanging so many emails with you. Yes, great.